From the outside, this small cabinet looks pretty typical, but on the inside, things are quite a bit different. Let me show you what I'm talking about on this side assembly. You can see that it's a frame and panel construction with styles and rails that wrap around a plywood panel. Now, normally on a project like this, everything's held together with a series of grooves and tongues and tenons. But on this project, I wanted to do things a little bit differently and make things simpler. So instead, all the parts are held together with pocket screws and a little bit of glue. Now the key thing here is I don't want these holes to be visible in the final assembly. Making that happen takes a little bit of planning. And it all starts with the order of construction. I'm going to begin with the plywood panel because it determines the sizes of the rails and the styles. Now the panel is simply cut to size and then I cut a shallow rabbit around the outside edges. Now this rabbit serves a couple of purposes. First, it creates an interesting shadow line around the assembly. And second, it evens out any variation between the alignment of the panel and the frame parts. Now the length of the upper and lower rails matches the width of the plywood panel. Then I'm going to drill a series of holes along the length to attach the rails to the panel with pocket screws. These holes are going to get covered up by the cabinet top and bottom later on. Now when you drill the holes, in the bottom rail it's not any big deal. You can just drill them as you normally would. But now the top rail is quite a bit narrower. So you can see that the holes end up being drilled in the top edge and the face. Let me show you how this works. I'm just going to align the mark on my workpiece with the jig and drill the hole. Now a hole like this isn't going to affect the strength of the joint. It just looks a little bit different from your typical pocket hole. Now after drilling the holes in the rails, I can glue them to the panel. I like to apply a thin bead of glue to the mating edges, but not too much because I don't want to have a lot of squeeze out to clean up. Once those three pieces are assembled, I can use that to size my styles. And then the styles are going to have pocket holes drilled along the length to attach it to the rails and the panel. Now you're going to see that the pocket holes are visible from the edge, but they're going to be covered up later on by the face frame. So now all I have to do is finish drilling my holes in this side assembly and get it all glued up. I've completed assembling the cabinet sides. Now I'm ready to move right into connecting them with a top, a divider, and a bottom. Now that's one of the great advantages of pocket screw joinery is that I don't have to wait for any glue to dry. Now the top, bottom, and divider couldn't be easier to make. They're just plywood panels that are simply cut to size. But there are a few differences that I want to point out. In the divider, I've drilled some large access holes for a screwdriver. That way I can use it to attach the solid wood top later on. And in the same way, I drilled some shank holes in the top piece. Now, each of these pieces have pocket holes drilled all the way around. Those are used to attach the sides as well as the face frames that we're going to make later on. Now, which face of the pieces you drill those into matters. For example, on the bottom and the divider, I drilled those pocket holes on the bottom face so that when everything's assembled, you won't see them. But in the top face, since it is going to get covered with a solid wood top, I drilled the holes in the upper face. The only tricky thing is keeping all these pieces aligned while you're driving in the screws. Now the solution for the top and bottom panel is to clamp a cleat across the side assembly. That way when the cleat's in there, I can set the top and bottom in place and it's not going to move around while I drive the screws. So let me get this all clamped up and the screws all put in place. I've already got the top screwed in place. Now I've set up the cleat to attach the case bottom and I'm ready to drive the screws. For the divider, I'm going to use it to create a small opening for the drawer. To do that, I flip the cabinet upside down and then I've cut some spacers that are the exact size of the drawer opening. Now I can set the divider in place. And drive the screws in and then this cabinet's ready for its face frames. 
Now, assembling a cabinet with pocket screws is a real time saver, but there are still a few things we need to do. That's right. We need to cover the exposed plywood edges here in the front and in the back, and of course, we need to add the top. Well, and don't forget we need to add a drawer, too. And as you can see, the parts for the drawer are assembled with a locking rabbit joint. That's right. And there's quite a bit to adding a drawer to a cabinet like this, and I'll get to that in a moment. But first, I need to add that face frame. At this point, the major construction is complete, but we still need to cover the exposed plywood edges with a face frame. Now, on this project, the face frame consists of two vertical pieces, the styles, and three horizontal pieces, the rails. Since we're using pocket screw joinery, all the pieces can be cut to their finished length and width. Now we just have to worry about positioning them correctly. Now the styles are easy. They just fit flush here with the edges of the cabinet. And the top rail is easy too. It just has to go and fit flush to the top of the styles. But the next rail down needs to fit flush with this drawer opening panel right here. So to get that in position, set a ruler here, and I'll transfer that location onto the style, move it over, do the same thing on this side. There. Now the same thing has to happen down here with this lower rail. It needs to be positioned flush to this bottom panel. So I'll do the same technique. Ruler, place it in position, transfer the location, move to the other side, transfer the location. Once all the locations are marked, I can go ahead and assemble the face frame using pocket screw joinery, then I'll move on and do the same thing to the back. After attaching the face frame, you're ready to move on to the top. Now the top is just a square hardwood blank. Now to create a shadow line similar to the one we used on the sides of the cabinet, the top rests on spacers. Now the spacers are just thin strips of hardwood that have been mitered on the ends. And once those have been glued in place, you're ready to attach the top. The top just sits on top of the spacers like that. Now, here's where those access holes that Phil drilled earlier come in handy. They allow you to use a large bladed screwdriver to get in there and attach the top. As Phil and I mentioned earlier, the drawer is really straightforward. It's just a locking rabbit joint on all four corners and a plywood bottom. But what's sort of interesting are some of the things you can't see, and those are the things that make the drawer work. For starters, we wanted to make sure that the drawer was centered side to side in the opening. So we're going to install these drawer guides on either side. And that way, when we slip the drawer in place, it automatically gets centered. The other thing is, you really don't want the drawer to tip down like this when you pull it out. So the solution to that is to install a kicker. And it just fits up behind that front rail. It'll be glued in place, just like that. Now when you pull the drawer out, it doesn't tip down. Oh, one last thing. It's a good idea to make sure that the drawer stops flush with the front face frame. So to do that, we're going to put a stop here in the back. And now, push the drawer in. It'll stay centered side to side and fit flush with the face frame. After getting the drawer to fit, it's time to move on to the shelf standards and the shelf. Now the shelf standards are real easy to make. They're just a piece of thin hardwood with a series of holes drilled in them. And the holes accept shelf pins, and that way you can adjust the height of the shelf. The other nice thing about these wood shelf standards is they cover up the pocket screws that you drilled earlier. So we'll just set this one in place. Drop in the shelf pin. Now I'm ready to set the shelf in place. Now a little bit of finish sanding and this project's ready for a couple coats of finish. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy to download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides. Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts. All fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.